Well, good morning, kids. Good morning, saints in the congregation. Great to see you this morning. Uh, did you know we have an amazing little contemplation prayer garden behind the church office? It, it was just done as part of an Eagle Scout project, and it's in memory of Emily Mogg. But let me show you what it's like. So to get there, when you come out of the church sanctuary, you have the social hall on the left, and if you keep walking back in the corner, there's a little gate. Now on Sundays, that gate is always unlocked and it will lead you back behind the church office. You walk down through the little passageway, turn left, skip the church office, make a turn, there's Beth and Lourdes' office in the garage, and it's right behind there. this great two-sided bench that you can sit on and spend some time just being out under the tree or even praying. Well, since I'm back here, I thought I would read you a story. It's from one of my favorite books called Does God Have a Big Toe? Stories about stories in the Bible. It's written by Rabbi Mark Gelman. And when I was in seminary in the early 1990s, he was a rabbi in Long Island. I was going to school in New Jersey and I actually had a chance to meet him uh, one time. We, we did some reader's theater of this book and invited him to come over. Anyway, uh, the story I want to read today connects with our Bible reading in church. The story is called Adam's Animals. God made and named almost everything in the world. God made and named heaven. God made and named earth. God made and named the sun and the moon and the stars and the waters. God made and named almost everything. God even made and named the first man, Adam, which means red earth because God made the first man out of red earth. But God did not name the animals. God thought, I want Adam and Adam's children to protect and care for these animals. Maybe if I let Adam name the animals, he'll get to know them better and really take care of them. Well, when Adam heard that he could name the animals, he was so happy, he ran right over to a brown furry with teeth who was sleeping under a tree and yelled in its ear, I am going to name you! The brown furry with teeth opened up one eye, yawned, and went back to sleep. Very soon, Adam realized <clears throat> he didn't know what to name the brown furry with teeth or, for that matter, any of the other animals. Adam sat down on the sleeping brown furry with teeth to think up a plan for naming the animals. Suddenly it came to him, I know I will give each animal a number. That way, when I want to call an animal, I'll just call its number. So Adam looked down at the brown furry with teeth, lifted up his ear and screamed, you are number one. The brown furry opened one eye, yawned and went back to sleep. Adam spent the rest of the day numbering the animals. He gave numbers to slimy swimmers with no fins, fuzzy hoppers with twitchy noses, squeaky flyers with colored feathers, chirping swingers with curling tails, speedy crawlers with tiny feet, scaly swimmers with red eyes, and a whole bunch of gray, black, and white furries with teeth who looked like they were related to number one. In the late afternoon, somewhere between the numbering of the tiny sand diggers and the swarming wood eaters, Adam lost count. He plopped down again on the brown furry with teeth to think up a new plan for naming the animals. After a time, Adam decided, I will call all the animals 
pay you. That way, when I need an animal, I'll only have to remember one name. The next day, Adam needed a big rock moved out of his way. And he wanted the large, gray, wrinkled up, long nosed, big eared, white tusked, tree eating stomper for the job. So he yelled, Hey, you! Come over here, move this rock! But instead of the large, gray, wrinkled up, long nosed, big eared, white tusked, tree eating stomper, a rather small, quite noisy, banana eating, chirping swinger hopped on top of the rock and began eating a banana. Adam was quite discouraged and returned to the brown furry with teeth to think up a new plan for naming the animals. But this time, Nothing came to him. Then the brown furry woke up, shook Adam into a nearby bush, growled a huge growl, looked Adam into the eye and said to him, listen, with all your talking, you never once thought to ask us, the animals, what we would like to be named. Now, why don't you try that? I don't know what they call a skinny, hairless, red earth footwalker like you, but they call me a bear. So, Adam asked all the animals what they wanted to be called. And you know what? They told him. <laughs> the end. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for this beautiful creation that you have made, the chance to be outside under the trees and the garden. Thank you for all the animals in this world that you have created and blessed us with, especially the ones we have around our own homes. Thank you for all the children, young and old, that are watching this and worshiping with us today. And we pray your blessings upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. So there you go. And you know, why don't you come back here sometime and spend time in the garden. Remember little Emily, connect with God and be grateful for this beautiful world we live in. All right, see you next week. So I wonder if I could climb this tree. Hmm. Yeah, probably not. Mm -hmm.